Night turns to day as fire races through eight blocks of the Jersey City industrial area. A fire of unknown origin started during the evening hours on the docks and rapidly took possession of an entire section of the waterfront. Warehouses, barges, and piers provide an almost endless supply of fuel. Heavy winds draw the fire into the railroad yards as the well-involved structures begin to collapse. Additional help is provided from across the river as New York fireboats lend a hand. Charging through the flames to reach the inlet, the firefighter is able to reach the rear of the fire and use its big guns to stop its spread. The devastation of the area is unbelievable. Over $25 million of property has been destroyed, but there was no loss of life. Drums of commercial grade nitrocellulose were being unloaded at the Maritime Commission Pier when one of the drums was hit by a fork truck. A Coast Guard fireboat was cruising near the pier, saw the flash fire, and went to work immediately. Nearly a thousand feet long, the pier was filled with inflammables which were immediately ignited by the flaming nitrocellulose. Within moments, the entire pier was on fire and the air quickly filled with toxic fumes. Gas masks are necessary to rescue the trapped and injured dockhands. Three perish and dozens fall victim to the acidic smoke which burns their skin, eyes and lungs. Midtown Manhattan residents had a front row seat as they watched the enormous fire across the Hudson on the Weehawken waterfront. The fire started when a drum of calcium carbide was dropped, split open, and fell into the river. A cloud of acetylene gas engulfed the pier, found an ignition source, and exploded. Within moments, the railroad pier was aflame. The adjacent industrial buildings were exposed to intense radiant heat and flying embers, and they too soon caught fire. Harbor tugs and fireboats attacked the incandescent structure from the water, but the intense heat vaporized their streams. Six New Jersey fire departments responded to fight the fire from land and were able to prevent the further spread of the fire. The collapsing buildings are left to burn. A total of 12 firemen and pier workers are transported to area hospitals suffering from smoke and eye injuries. 
A total of 30 firefighting boats worked to extinguish the $6 million pier fire. Linemen from the Fire Alarm Telegraph Bureau were installing a new cable and a fire alarm box on the lower level of the municipal ferry terminal when one of the linemen smelled smoke. The acting foreman, who would later die in the smoke, gave the order to send an alarm from Box 30 and to move the vehicles out of the way of the incoming apparatus. The blaze began under a wooden platform in the train station and spread rapidly through the dry, oil-soaked planking and tar-covered pilings. Borough calls were made. Brooklyn units were instructed to use the 69th Street Ferry, while Manhattan units were ordered to use the Holland Tunnel to Jersey City and then cross the Bayonne Bridge to Staten Island. 235 firemen were injured fighting the fire, along with dozens of civilians. Two men and a woman were killed. Fortunately, a departing ferry had emptied the waiting area just moments before the fire was discovered. Otherwise, hundreds of commuters would have been caught in the inferno. The entire Staten Island Rapid Transit Station was destroyed, along with 14 electric rail cars. The multiple alarm blaze burned for 48 hours and resulted in over two million in property damage. <laughs>